Hello, everybody. This is Grandmaster Robert Hungaski for ChessLecture.com. And today I wanted to share a recent project that I began maybe two or three weeks ago. And it's closely related to the current situation afflicting tournament players, right? We don't really have over the board tournaments as an option. So a lot of the activity that's going on is restricted to the online format. And inevitably, that has also led to a shortening of time controls. And this, in turn, has really made me start thinking about, well, what changes do I need to make to really get the most out of this format? And I began to experiment with some positions and some openings that maybe I would not have taken as seriously for, let's say, a 40 and 2 sudden death 1 time control that you would normally encounter in big open tournaments in the US. Right now, it seems like most of the tournaments are 3 plus 2 or 3 0. So a far cry from you know, the time controls we tournament players are used to. So I began to examine a Sicilian that I normally use for illustrative purposes when I'm trying to explain the basic ideas that Black is playing for when Black plays a Sicilian and also when I talk a little bit about the history and evolution of the Sicilian as a whole. So let's get started. After the moves e4, c5, knight f3, we're going to be talking about the move knight c6. And this has usually been my preference whenever I play the Sicilian as black. I think it is by far the most practical of black's options. And for those of you that are familiar with the series I did on how to play against the Sicilian, well, you'll remember that my entire repertoire is based on setting up the Meroxy bind or hedgehog pawn structures, meaning white is trying to get pawns on e4 and especially on c4. So when the knight comes to c3, this knight is actually sheltered by the pawn on c4. And one of the reasons why I like the move knight c6 so much is because it's one of the most challenging ways of meeting this idea that white has. So for example, the most common move here would be knight f6, and after knight c3, then pawn to e5, leading to the Sveshnikov variation, which is right now at the peak of its popularity, thanks to the efforts of Magnus Carlsen. Also, black has some minor alternatives that should not be completely brushed off, right? We have the move e5, leading to A, the Kalashnikov variation, or B, the subject of our discussion today, A6, the Lowenthal variation. After knight d6, bishop takes, queen takes, and queen f6. And I actually have been doing a lot of work on this variation and this position in particular. I've been examining all of white's options here. We have queen takes f6, which was played in this game. Queen d1, which I consider to be the absolute main line and the only serious challenge to the Lowenthal. Queen c7, I would say this white's second most challenging move and very interesting move. And then the minor lines, queen d2 and queen a3, which really should not concern us too much. Now, today I wanted to focus on queen takes f6, which is the move that I encounter the most in my tournament practice, but my online blitz tournament practice in particular. But before we get into that, I really want to talk about what kind of position black is trying to get, not just in the Lowenthal, but really whenever we encounter the Sicilian defense. What is the identity of the Sicilian? What makes a Sicilian a Sicilian? What do all Sicilians have in common, right? And once we understand this, we have the foundation to really move around. You can play the Lowenthal, you can play the Sveshnikov, you can play the Nidorf, you can even play the Accelerated Dragon or the Khan Sicilian, and you will always have this central idea that will thread all Sicilians. So the Lowenthal is a great place to start, and usually when somebody is thinking about making a repertoire change and adopting the Sicilian for the first time, I usually recommend the Lowenthal as a good place to start. First of all, theory considers the Lowenthal somewhat dubious, but 
the lines that white has to know to actually take advantage of this are incredibly complex and I've actually never encountered a player on the white side that has been A, prepared, and B, ready to handle the complex positions, even if white gets to the position that is so-called clearly better. So what does black achieve already on move two or three in the Sicilian? Well, mainly black achieves a pawn majority in the center. So the key idea in the Sicilian for black is going to be to mobilize these pawns. And whenever black plays a pawn to e5, black will automatically weaken the d6 and d5 squares. But black will argue that this is only a momentary weakening because he will eventually be able to carry out the d5 pawn break. So whenever you encounter openings like the Lowenthal, the Kalashnikov, the Sveshnikov, black will always be trying to execute the d5 pawn break. And if black manages to do this, then black will have at least an equal comfortable position. In practice, black will already be better. So the main idea, let's say after e5, I've actually encountered the move knight b3 or knight f3 quite often in practice. And this is going to be a great illustration of how things can quickly spin out of control for white. For example, after knight b3, knight f6, knight c3, black will already play bishop b4 and put tremendous pressure on white's center. So for example, we're threatening knight takes e4. Now after bishop d3, we see black's opening goal achieved. d5, and after something like e takes d5, knight takes d5, black has achieved the pawn on e5, black has carried out the d5 pawn break, black is ready to castle and enjoys a better position. Black will also create some pretty serious damage to the pawn structure here. For example, after bishop d2, takes, 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 and simply castles. I mean, it's hard to argue that white is not worse here. So going back, we see that white has to be proactive if he is not only to aspire to an advantage, but really to avoid a worse position. So white, whenever white encounters the move e5, or e6 for that matter, weakening the d6 square in particular, white should try to play the move knight to b5. Now, in my repertoire as white, I always try to recommend moves where white can get a pawn to c4, and that is exactly the case in the Kalashnikov. But we will see that in the Lowenthal, white doesn't have enough time to accomplish this. So after pawn to a6, knight d6, bishop takes, queen takes, queen f6, many people have the misguided idea that when black plays the Lowenthal, that black is aiming for a very sharp, complex game. And that is not the case at all. Black's goal is incredibly simple, and it is to weaken white's control over d5 so that we can play the d5 pawn break ourselves. And we will see this as a recurring theme, regardless of the move that white chooses here. So for example, one of the most extreme cases and one of my favorite lines, even though it's probably the most devastating line for black here is after queen d1, queen g6, white goes knight c3, and here black goes pawn to d5. So we will probably be discussing this variation at length in another video, but the basic idea now is that if white goes e takes d5, white is already losing. After the move knight to d4 here, there's no good way of defending the c2 pawn because bishop d3 simply runs into queen takes g2. So after queen d1, queen g6, uh, and d5, white has to be very, very careful. In fact, the move queen takes d5 also leads to some very serious problems. After bishop to e6, let's say the queen has to move, we can either go to c5 or d1. If queen c5, knight d4, and once again, serious trouble when it comes to defending c2, since the knight has to stay on c3 to protect e4. And if queen d1, which is probably the only move here, well, then simply rook d8, and black is getting